So if we look first here at the square root of 25, now notice there's a plus or minus in front of it. The reason why is typically um, you will be indicated whether you want both roots, just the positive root, or the negative root. But technically, when you take the square root of a number, it is the absolute value of 5, which we know, so this example, 5 squared, would be positive 5, negative 5 would be the solution, plus or minus 5. So according to the definition, square root of plus or minus square root of 900, well, we know 900 to be 30 squared. And the definition says the square root of 30 squared is the absolute value of 30, which we know absolute value of 30 is 30 and a negative 30. So it would be plus or minus 30. Now, a lot of times you will see a problem written like this. And you ask yourself, ah, am I supposed to find the positive root, the negative, or both the positive and the negative? Well, if it's not clearly indicated to you, then they'll be asking for what we call the principal square root, which is the positive. Now, you look at this, you go, wow, Ms. Kleiber, 64 over 144, yikes. Now, we will be able to use some properties. And I can see here, it looks like I think there might be a common. I can reduce this. Am I right? Does 8 go into both of them? So 64 divided by 4 is 8. 144 divided by 8 is 18, right? Ooh, and then I can reduce again. So if I divide by 2, um, let's see, I get 4 over 9. Oh, and we know the square root of 4 nines is, whoops, why am I writing? When you take the square root, it would be 2 thirds. Whoops, my pen went away now. 2 thirds. Now, they just wanted the principal root. Okay, so I leave the answer as 2 thirds. Now, here, they want the negative root. So I ask myself, does 125 have a number where you square it equals 125? Yes, it does. I believe it is 15 squared. So therefore, when you take the square root of 15 squared, it's 15, and they wanted the negative root. Okay? Now, one of the properties with square roots is that multiplication. If I have a radicand and it's a product of two numbers, I can split it up into a product of its squares. Why would I want to do that? Well, when I look at 400, it could be split up into the square root of 100 times the square root of 4. And isn't that much easier? I want the principal root, which would be 10 times 2, which is 20. I'm going to have to pause this a minute. Okay, I'm sorry for the interruption. So I think I kind of lost track of where we were, but it looks like we're moving on to the next problem. Now, also, there is a division property for radicals. If you're dividing, a, you have a radical of A divided by B, then we are allowed to split that into a quotient of radical A over radical B. So, for example, in this problem, we have radical 36 over 81. Well, I immediately recognize 36 to be a perfect square in 81. So, according to the division property, I can rewrite it as a quotient of radicals. So now I have the square root of 36, which we know to be 6. Now, why am I just putting the positive? Because you notice here, it's not indicated both, so I want the principal root over, and the square root of 81 is 9. So 6 ninths, but then I can reduce that to 2 thirds. Okay, fantastic. A couple more quick examples, and then you'll be off on your own. Find the indicated root of square root of 64. Honestly, I think that might be a little too simple. Let's move on to number 6. So I want the negative root of 196. Oh, boy. So I have to ask myself, what multiplied by itself is 196? So, yes, actually. Now, if I remember correctly, I think it's 14 times 14. So this is the square root of 14 squared, which by definition of, of square root is I get neg whoa, negative 14. So when you take the square root, you end up with the root. Okay, moving along. Oh boy, we have the square root of 9 one hundredths. Well, do you notice how I said that? It is the square root of 9 one hundredths. And now, since I recognize this to be a quotient of two perfect squares, we could write a square root of 9 over the square root of 100, which we know the square root of 9 is 3, square root of 100 is 10. And we want the principal root, so it's positive. Woohoo! Same thing here. We have square root of 64 over 100. And again, I recognize that to be a square, oh, sorry, square root of 64 over the square root of 100. And I want the negative root, which would be 8 over 10. And we could reduce that to negative 4 fifths. Fantastic. Okay. 
And last but not least, you have to simplify square root of 20 over 45 um, and reduce that. Now, if I were to split it up into a quotient of roots, we notice that 20 is not a rational root and neither is 45. So that's not working for me there. Okay, so let's try something different. Can I reduce the fraction 20 over 45? Yes, I can. I notice they both divide by 5. So I'd get 4 over 9. Yes, I hit the jackpot. So now I'll split it up into a quotient of two radicals. And the square root of five, 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. So I get 2 thirds. Yes. 180 and 845. Again, I notice that those are not perfect squares. So I'm going to reduce my fraction first. So 180 and 845, I know they both divide by 5, right? There might be something bigger. But again, I'm not using my calculator. So if I divide 180 by 5, I get 8, 5 times 3 is 15, 30, 36. Oh, that's nice. And then 5 into 845, 5 goes once, 34. 5 goes 5 times 6 is 30. And then I have 45. 5 times 9. Oh, this does work out really nice. So if I split it up into a quotient of two radicals, the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 169 is 13. And therefore, the result is plus or minus 6 over 13. And that is the end. Have a great day.